Congress has been rocked by its own sexual misconduct allegations this week, with Senator Al Franken being accused of sexual harassment and yet more women coming forward to accuse Alabama Senate candidate Roy Moore of sexually assaulting them as teenagers. For more on this, it's time for a closer look. The avalanche of sexual harassment allegations in the last few weeks has shown us that predatory behavior is everywhere, in virtually every aspect of society, in the news business, in entertainment, and in politics. Every day, there are more revelations, and this week we started to get a sense of just how pervasive sexual harassment is in Congress, too. There are two members of Congress, Republican and Democrat, right now, who serve, who have been subject to review, or not have been, been subject to review, but have engaged in sexual harassment. These harasser propositions such as, are you going to be a good girl, to perpetrators exposing their genitals, to victims having their private parts grabbed on the House floor. That is awful. I'd say Congress is full of dicks, but most of them look more like ball sacks. And today, we also learned yet again, as if more evidence was needed, that this is not a partisan problem. There are sexual harassers of all political persuasions in both parties. Take Minnesota Senator Al Franken. Today, an anchor for KABC in Los Angeles said, Senator Al Franken kissed and groped me without my consent during a USO tour in 2006 and shared this photo of Franken groping her while she was asleep. That is horrifying. And she's wearing army gear because it's a USO tour. But honestly, who could blame women if they started wearing military gear whenever they're around men? <laughs> Where are you going in a helmet and a flak jacket? The subway. <laughs> this is a pervasive problem that affects every aspect of society and every political party, and everyone should be held accountable, from Al Franken to Roy Moore to Bill Clinton to the current president of the United States. And yet, amid all of this, there are still Republicans defending Moore, their nominee for Senate in Alabama, who, of course, has been accused of sexually assaulting underage girls. Take, for example, Alabama Congressman Mo Brooks, who said he still plans to support Moore because the conservative agenda is vastly more important than contested sexual allegations from four decades ago. An ABC reporter tried to ask Brooks if he believes the very credible accounts of the women who accused Moore of sexual assault, and Brooks literally ran away from him during the interview. You believe that you know, the women? Bad day to wear my tap shoes. <laughs> I tell Mo Brooks to go to hell, but it looks like that's where he's trying to get. <laughs> that whole scene reminds me of the M.C. Escher drawing titled The Chicken <laughs> Of course, part of the reason Republicans are so desperate to ignore questions about Moore is that even the ones who say they believe his accusers can't explain why they don't also believe the women who have accused President Trump of sexual assault. A reporter for the Huffington Post valiantly tried to get Wyoming Senator Mike Enzi to answer that question, but Enzi wouldn't budge. I'm working on taxes right now and concentrating on that and heading to a meeting where I have to speak, and that's what I'm concentrating on. Enzi said, walking quickly down a Senate hallway. Asked if he has any thoughts at all on the Moore scandal, he replied, my thoughts are on taxes if you want to talk about taxes. Okay. Do you want to tax Roy Moore? Asked HuffPost. <laughs> Enzi said nothing and walked away. You got to admire. You got to admire the Huffington Post effort. Reporters should just keep doing that until Republicans answer the question. Look, I just want to talk about building a wall. Okay, should we build a wall between teenagers and Roy Moore? A reporter for NBC News similarly tried to get an answer about more from Arkansas Republican Senator Tom Cotton with no luck. Here's that transcript. Do you think that Roy Moore should drop out of the race? No comment. Do you have any comment at all about his alleged? No comment. Do you support his candidacy? No comment. Elevator doors close. <laughs> so technically, the elevators had more to say in that transcript than Tom Cotton. So hey, elevator, do you think Roy Moore should drop out? The refusal by many Republicans, including the president, to discuss Moore's situation comes as we keep getting information about how creepy his behavior was. Earlier this week, it was reported that Moore was actually banned from the Gazden Mall and the YMCA. He got banned from the YMCA despite dressing exactly like one of the village people. <laughs> 
Now, yesterday on MSNBC, Moore's lawyer, Trenton Garman, tried to dispute the claim that Moore was banned from the mall. But in the process, he seemed to confirm that there were indeed complaints about his behavior. I was engaged in litigation with the Gadsden Mall. It had a settlement that was confidential. I'm intimately familiar there were procedures inside of the Gadsden Mall, and there, uh, from what I have been told, has never been a list with Roy Moore banned from being mm -hmm. at the mall. So they processed that out, and they determined, no, whatever it is that someone has said has made them uncomfortable, we don't find it to be worthy to put them on a list. Is it not cause for concern that there would even be any sort of settlement with the Gadsden Mall. Roy Moore was in his 30s. No. What type sure. of settlement no, would there be? <clears throat> no, there was not a settlement with Roy Moore. It had nothing to do. Roy Moore has never had a settlement with the Gadsden Mall. I'm talking about my personal experience as a litigator. I have represented people against the Gadsden Mall. Wait, you've been a lawyer in other cases of people v. Mall? <laughs> so I guess you've been banned from the mall and need a lawyer. Trenton Garman is your man. <laughs> But the weirdest part of the interview that Moore's lawyer gave to MSNBC came when he tried to defend Moore's claim that he always asked for permission from a girl's mother before dating her. Garmin tried to argue that that kind of behavior was common in other cultures and threw in some gross racism when he tried to cite MSNBC anchor Ali Velshi's background to bolster his case. Why would he need permission from any of these girls' mothers They're not if they weren't underage? Sure, that, that's a good question. And culturally speaking, obviously there's differences. I looked up uh, Allie's background there. And wow, that's awesome that you have got a such a diverse background. It's really cool to read through that. But point is this: what does you know, Allie's each culture background has a, have to do with dating a 14-year-old? Uh, I'm, I'm I'm not finished with the context of it. Well, please but answer. Point what, of is it Allie's, is this. what does Allie Velshi's background have to do with dating under children, 14-year-old girls? Sure. In other, in other countries, there's arrangement through parents for what we would refer Allie's to as consensual marriage. So. Allie's from Canada. Allie's from Canada. So either Trenton Garman is a racist or he thinks Canada has arranged marriages. <laughs> and yet, in spite of all this damning evidence about Moore's predatory and grotesque behavior, Trump still has said nothing about what Moore should do. In fact, yesterday he spoke at the White House about his trip to Asia and completely ignored questions about Moore from reporters. America is back, and the future has never looked brighter. Thank you, God bless you, and God bless the United States of America. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you all. Wait, should Roy Moore resign, Mr. President? Do you believe in the future? Do you believe in the future? If the future is so bright, why do you look so bummed out walking away? <laughs> so everything is great and there's nothing to be upset about. <laughs> and while some Republicans are desperate to ignore the questions, others are urging Trump to take a stand, like South Carolina Senator Lindsey Graham, who had this to say about more. I met a lot of people in the mall, and if you're getting kicked out of the mall, that's... <laughs> Pretty bad situation you find yourself in. I mean, I agree, but why have you met a lot of people in the mall? I got a booth. It's called Lindsay's Nut Hut. It's mostly pecans. Those pecans are as sweet as old Lindsay. This is a society-wide problem born out of systemic misogyny and abuse of power, and both parties need to take it seriously, no matter who's accused. Don't you agree, Congressman Mo Brooks? This has been a closer look.